Good morning, everyone. Um, you're very welcome um, to this, the launch of the uh, Focus Ireland annual report. Um, today's gathering is a continuing reflection of the times in which we live, but it's more of a physical engagement than we've been able to have um, recently, which is great. But I'm also conscious that there are people uh, joining us uh, online, so I'd like to welcome them also. And indeed, to thank um, Wynn's Hotel for, for hosting us and supporting us. Um, the Lord Mayor, Alison Gillian, sends her apologies and her, her best wishes for our event. Um, we're going to uh, hear in a moment from our Chief Executive Officer, Pat Jennigan. We'll be hearing from Sister Stan, our founder and life president, president and very importantly, from one of our customers. And hopefully, um, you'll have an opportunity at the end to uh, uh, engage with Stan and with Pat. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to our Chief Executive Officer, Pat Jennigan. Thanks, Michael, and hello, everyone. Welcome to the launch of our annual report for 2020. This is another new departure for Focus Ireland in that we are launching our annual report using both an in-person and an online hybrid format. So thank you for, to everyone for joining us this morning in whichever way you join us. While we were planning our work and goals for 2020 at the end of 2019, we already, we already knew it was going to be a challenging year. The number of people experiencing homelessness was at the highest level ever. But there were some early signs that family homelessness was beginning to plateau which we thought would give us a rare opportunity to refocus on our vision of ending rather than managing homelessness. By St. Patrick's Day, we knew that those challenges that we had originally planned for would be faced in a very different environment. Focus Ireland deals with emergencies every day and our teams can always be relied upon in a crisis. Responding to COVID-19 was no exception. From the outset of the pandemic, our main objectives were to keep our customers, tenants and staff safe, as well as continuing our work of preventing families and individuals from becoming homeless and supporting people to exit homelessness. Our annual report 2020 demonstrates how we continue to focus on this core part of our vision, despite the pandemic. This report shows the many challenges that Focus Ireland experienced in 2020 in helping to support people experiencing and at risk of homelessness, as well as the unique opportunities that we were presented with during the year. This morning, we will reflect on what we accomplished in 2020, but it's important to say right from the start that these achievements would not have been possible alone. One of the remarkable features of the response to the pandemic was the renewed sense of partnership, collaboration and teamwork between NGOs, local authorities, state agencies, the Dublin Regional Homeless Executive, the government and the health services. Solutions were found to previously unsolvable problems. Red tape was cut and access to housing and safer emergency accommodation was fast tracked. One of the clear demonstrations of this partnership meant that together we ensured that people experiencing homelessness in Dublin suffered fewer deaths from COVID-19 than in almost any other major city. Partnership has always been a core value of Focus Ireland, and we know it is essential to solving homelessness. The renewed sense of partnership and trust are aspects that we believe we all need to retain, learn from and build on as we work together with the shared goal of making homelessness a thing of the past. <clears throat> in our annual report 2020, we want to explain the work we do and the difference we make. So the report is structured not around our own internal organisational units, but around the people we work with, families, young people and single people with complex needs. In the section on families, we cover the work of our prevention services around the country, our Dublin Family Homeless Action Team, our housing services and our research and advocacy projects undertaken to support families and the key donors and state partners who made that work possible. Our work with young people and single people with complex needs is reported in the same way. Of course, for transparency and accountability, the details of how we deliver this work are important too. Therefore, at the core of this report is a comprehensive director's report and independently audited financial section, 
which allows you to understand how we deployed our resources to the greatest effect during the year. Every part of Focus Ireland rose to the challenge that 2020 brought. Our staff responded with incredible commitment and innovation right from the start of the pandemic. Our case management teams shifted to providing online support to customers where possible. We repeatedly adapted our services and housing to meet the needs of customers while making sure we adhered to public health guidelines. We worked with the HSE and the DRHE to develop new approaches to help protect the most vulnerable people we support, which resulted in the opening of a new shielding accommodation. But despite all the restrictions, there are a couple of examples that stand out for me. It is a testament to our teams and staff at the coffee shop that they served over 82,000 hot takeaway meals in 2020 and continue to provide expert advice right through the pandemic, providing a vital lifeline when almost everything else was closed. It is also incredibly important that despite the difficulties that the pandemic presented to our work, we were able to support a record 1,829 households to avert the risk of homelessness or to move to a new secure home in 2020. There are many routes into homelessness, but every route out involves an affordable home. For 30 years, a key part of Focus Ireland's contribution has, to be, has been to provide affordable homes through our approved housing body, Focus Housing Association. During 2020, we worked with local authorities and state agencies to directly provide 130 additional homes to people moving out or at risk of homelessness. This is just a small overview of some of our achievements last year, and I would invite you to read our full annual report 2020 to get an insight into some of our incredible accomplishments from last year. However, our work is about more than statistics, and we also believe that we should be measured by our impact on the lives of people we support. So I also invite you to read about some of the families and individuals that we supported in 2020 and the difference that living a safe and secure home has on people's lives. The belief that we can end homelessness is core to Focus Ireland, and we know that the skilled and dedicated work of our own frontline services must be underpinned by effective public policies on housing and social services. While it may seem like a long time ago now, early 2020 was dominated by anticipation of an imminent general election. In the run-up to the general election, during the campaign and during the government formation talks, Focus Ireland highlighted the policies and priorities that our experience told us were needed. We were very pleased to see many of our key election asks around the development of a national youth homelessness strategy, a referendum on a constitutional right to housing, and the establishment of a housing commission included in the programme for government and further committed to in the new housing for all strategy that was launched last month. Homelessness and the housing crisis were one of the main issues that voters wanted tackled by the new government, and our work made sure that the difficulties experienced by those at risk of and experiencing homelessness was not lost once the COVID crisis began. We hope that our campaigns over the last 18 months, like our Focus on Families and End Homelessness campaigns and our research have all contributed to a better understanding of the solutions to homelessness among public representatives and to a more, effect, more effective policies. Now I would like to introduce a short video about our End Homelessness campaign. We have called for a commitment to end homelessness for a number of years, and over 10,000 people signed our petition, which we handed into the three government parties before the summer. This short video from the campaign shows why the commitment to end homelessness is so important, and it is so positive that it is included in the new government strategy.
While this morning is about looking back on 2020, it is also a good opportunity to look towards the future. Increased family homelessness has been one of the most distressing aspects of the housing and homelessness crisis, and Focus Ireland has, in collaboration with the Dublin Regional Homeless Executive, local authorities, the HSE and TUSLA, continue to lead the way in understanding and responding to family homelessness. In January 2020, we opened the Focus Ireland Family Centre to provide essential support to vulnerable families. And to date, we have gained welcome support from the Department of Housing, the DRHG and private donors. More needs to be done. But I believe that with the support of donors and statutory partners, this new service will play a vital role in supporting families across Dublin in the years ahead. At the end of 2020, we came to the end of our organisational strategy period. And at the beginning of this year, we launched our new strategy that will guide all of our work for the next five years. At the core of our new strategy is the vision that homelessness can be ended. This goal of ending homelessness can sometimes be dismissed as naive. And of course, we recognize that there is still so much to do to achieve this. We know that there will always be nights when someone needs shelter. But we believe that all policies and services need to start moving away from managing homelessness towards ending it. This goal cannot be achieved easily or soon, nor can it be achieved by Focus Ireland alone. We greatly welcome the government's recent signing of the European Declaration on Combating Homelessness and the commitment to eradicate homelessness by 2030 in the new Housing for All plan. This is a commitment that Focus Ireland has long campaigned for because we believe that setting this as our goal is a fundamental first step towards ending homelessness and not just managing a crisis. Effective and innovative partnerships between government, local authorities, state organisations and NGOs are vital in this regard. And as well as working with our partners to help reshape public policy, we will also make our own unique contribution over the lifetime of our new strategy, which will see Focus Ireland and Focus Housing Association provide 1,152 additional households with a home, support 5,000 households out of homelessness, and help prevent 3,000 households from becoming homeless in the first place and avoiding this trauma. The contributions of Focus Ireland and Focus Housing Association under our new strategy are valuable in their own right, but they are more essential in demonstrating what can be achieved and how this crisis can be addressed. Make no mistake, we transform lives with each individual and each family we support out of homelessness or prevent from becoming homeless. But to transform homelessness itself, we need to work together in partnership in a national strategy involving a wide range of agencies and departments. The framework for that interaction has now been set out by the government and Housing for All, and Focus Ireland has welcomed Housing for All, especially for its goal of ending homelessness by 2030. However, we do not think it is a criticism of Housing for All to say that while it sets ambitious objectives, it does not set out the route to achieve them. Even if every one of the 18 action points on homelessness were fully achieved, they would not achieve the goal of ending homelessness. To criticise Housing for All on that basis, as some have done, is to misunderstand the scale of the challenge ahead of us and how much work we will have to do together to achieve that goal. Indeed, this approach may be a strength. We have allowed homelessness to become a huge and complex problem and to end it by 2030, we will need to bring down this huge complex problem into separate elements, each which can be resolved. In short, we need to map out a pathway to 2030 with milestones through which we can measure our progress and checkpoints to keep us on track. Ending homelessness will not come with one giant leap, but with the sum total of each step we take together along an agreed path. We need to start to map that pathway now both with urgency and realism. We believe the government is serious about its 2030 commitment, but it needs to demonstrate this seriousness to all by setting out what it expects to be achieved by the time it leaves office. As a member of the Minister's High Level Task Force over the coming months, Focus Ireland will be bringing ideas to government about what the pathway should look like and what additional actions will be needed to progress along it. We also hope to contribute through the soon to be established National Housing Commission the National Homelessness Committee and at European level through our involvement in FIANSA. Focus Ireland has campaigned hard over a long number of years 
for government to make this commitment. And now that they have, we will do everything in our power to help them achieve it. To conclude, there are a lot of incredible people I would like to thank for making the work we do possible. Firstly, I'd like to thank all the state agencies and local authorities who not only funded our work in 2020, but worked in partnership with us. As I've spoken already this morning, nothing can be achieved alone, and our partners also have a lot to be proud of. I want to thank our individual and corporate donors who stood by us during very uncertain times. During such a difficult year for everyone, you never forgot the extra challenges faced by those without a home, and, that, and for that we are truly grateful. I'd also like to extend my sincere thanks to all our frontline and support staff for their great work last year and for rising to the challenges of 2020 with such innovation and determination. I'd like to thank the board members of, of Focus Ireland and Focus Housing Association who, who all gave their time to us voluntarily for making themselves extra available to deal with issues as they emerged and for guiding Focus Ireland through such a challenging time while simultaneously never letting the delivery of good governance procedures slip. Finally, I must pay tribute to our incredible customers and tenants who have shown new depths of resilience over the last 18 months. Thank you for working with us, for following the new regulations and also for looking after each other during such a difficult time. Now I'm delighted to introduce you to Khaled here in front, who is here today to help us launch our annual report. In a, in a moment, Khaled will tell his own story, but I would just like to say it is stories like his which show there is a way out of homelessness for everyone once the right amount of support is there when it is need needed. Thank you, Kalat. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Khaled Kisses. I'm a married guy with uh, four children. Three of them are already in college, and one of them is working. Uh, when we first came here, we came as a result of the ongoing situation in Libya. I come from Libya, by the way. And uh, the civil war did not uh, give us or provide us with any security and safety anymore. The, the deteriorating situation made it very difficult for any family in Libya to live securely and safely. In the early 2000, I was here in Ireland and I stayed about three years. I had a son who was born here, but we eventually went back to Libya for personal reasons. When we felt really unsafe and we feared for our life, my son who was born in Ireland came back and here to Dublin and he stayed with his aunt. Things were not easy for us anymore. We, we, we even felt physical threat as a family. So we decided to all come and join our son here in Ireland. Of course, after a while, we, we were housed in emergency situation, accommodation, and we had to move from one hotel to another like every day. As a family, we were housed in one room, and you can imagine that a family packed in one room with children already in school. For a child who does not speak English and he has to go to school, the burden was too much. The challenges were really, really overwhelming because they were expected to do well in their academic studies. They were expected to learn English they're expected to integrate in society and make friends. And that, of course, cannot be done when you are homeless, when you are given emergency accommodation and you are packed in one room with all your brothers and sisters. That was really difficult for them. It was also difficult for my wife, a mother who had to look, up, had to look after her children, care for the family, and at the same time, she was expected to learn English and integrate into society. The challenges were really, really too much. But these challenges and this hardship came to an end in the year 2020, when we were housed by Focus Island, and we were given 
a nice house in a really nice area. The children got their confidence back and they started doing really well. They picked up the language really quickly. And as, as we speak today, three of them are in college and one of them is working. My wife, that lady who came here with the children and had the role of looking after the family, she did not speak English and she was in one room with her children. Today, with her work and efforts, she joined the, the TUS program, the community employment, and she got a job as a retail assistant in NCBI charity shops. On a personal level, myself, I was looking for a job and I probably made 100 applications to get a job, but it wasn't easy. I never made it. I only secured just uh, probably a few interviews, but uh, those interviews got me nowhere. Then I was introduced to Focus Island Pete by the amazing support officer, Emilia. Thanks a lot for this. And she introduced me to Pete program and they have helped me tremendously. Uh, special thanks for Aileen. She helped me a lot. She redesigned my CV and she also worked with me on interview techniques and the moment i applied for a job afterwards i secured an interview and i got the job and i am working now for a very famous social media company uh, reviewing their content and making the users safe online thanks a lot fox island you ended the suffering of this family you ended the daily travel to train stations with the luggage and suitcases and thinking about where to spend the night the next day. Focus Island ended all this hardship by providing this accommodation and they gave us our confidence back and we gained life again. I believe that Focus Island, and, uh, and this is an experience, Focus Island does not provide just a housing. They provide support as well, because once we, we, we were given the house, they were with us along the way. Every week we have the support officer either phoning on, or sending messages, making sure we, are, we were doing okay, making sure that our needs were actually met, and also the housing officer who were after maintenance and work, they were with us every day. They were with us whenever we needed them. If you think this is a success story, I can assure you that Focus Island contributed a great deal to the success. Today, I know that behind every smile that my children have on their faces, Focus Island lies there. Focus Island did not just give them a house, Focus Island gave them life and hope. Thanks a lot, Focus Island. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Khaled. Thank you indeed. Um, our, our customers are obviously central to everything that Focus Ireland does, and it's important that we hear the voice of our customers. And within the organization, I know our staff listen very carefully to our customers, but it's important for us that that message is communicated to uh, the wider public as well, that what Focus does with the support of our donors does make a difference, and Khaled and, and many others are, are testimony to that. So thank you for sharing your, your story with us uh, this morning, Khaled. Now, um, uh, a lot of years ago, um, the woman on my right here started uh, the process which uh, br brought us all here today uh, and uh, created and fostered the organization that is Focus Ireland. And uh, it's entirely appropriate before we, we conclude that we hear from her. So uh, our founder and indeed our uh, honorary life president, Sister Stan.
Thank you very much, Michael, and good morning, everyone. And um, thank you for joining us this morning, for the launch of our annual report. 2020 has been a very challenging year, and we are still dealing with the public health emergency. But during the year, as Pat has said, Focus Ireland has worked more closely than ever with the statutory bodies and with other partners to protect homeless people during COVID. There are no positives from pandemics, but we can learn some lessons. And one lesson is we have seen what happens when the government and the people work together for a common cause. And we believe that the very same thing can happen with regard to homelessness if the government and the people work together to end homelessness. The challenge for us now is to build on what has been achieved, of what we've experienced in coping with, home, with the COVID and make that a turning point in working to end homelessness. Focus Ireland has a very strong record of having a progressive approach to homelessness. And in drawing, we believed really from the beginning, the importance of identifying the routes and pathways into homelessness, and then working through policies, services and legislation to block those passages. In that way, we would prevent individuals, young people and families from becoming homeless in the first place. And the rationale be beyond, behind that is that we not only need emergency beds, but we need above all a clear plan that looks beyond the bed for the night to providing permanent homes with supports we needed. We believed, as Pat said, we believed in 85 when we started and we still believe that homelessness can be ended. And therefore it was encouraging in hearing through the recent strategy by the government housing for all with a commitment to end homelessness by the end of the decade. This is something that we have sought for many years. This new strategy has also a commitment and, and, and ambitious plans with regard to housing targets and a commitment to monitor and oversee the progress of the strategy during its lifetime. However, the strategy is lacking in two important areas. It's lacking with regard to details about family homelessness and about prevention. And these are two important areas that need to be tackled if we're to end homelessness. As you've read in our annual report, Focus Ireland has moved record families out of homelessness over the past year. This work must continue as we emerge from the COVID. We cannot allow homelessness to be part of the new norm. While Focus Ireland has worked very closely with government in providing housing, we mustn't forget that previous policies of successive governments have been far too market driven. They relied on the market to provide home social housing and to end homelessness. The market did not and never will end homelessness and we shouldn't expect it to. This new government strategy must deliver change if it is to succeed in ending homelessness. That means actively building more social housing. It means taxing people who hoard building land. And it means providing better support for tenants who are at risk of eviction. Delivering social houses has continued for too long to depend on acquisitions and leasing. This short-term approach is one that's used by local authorities and by approved housing bodies. And this worked well in the early stages of recovery from the financial crisis. 
But however, we've relied for too long on the short term approach, which means that we are really not adding to the housing stock. It creates a scenario where the government is com competing for limited stock that already exists, rather than providing new social housing. The provision of new social housing built for purpose is critically important if we are to end homelessness. The scenario of, of drawing on the existing stock has led to a situation with the rising house prices and also the increase in rents. And this simply can't continue. We need change. We need the government to take an active role if it is his, to end homelessness. It mis must provide a very clear, distinct, robust role in providing social housing that are purposely built, if it is to fix this broken system of housing that we have. But the government will only do that if it recognises that a home is a fundamental right. It's a right that if it isn't there, other rights are meaningless. The planned referendum must take that on board and it must put to the people the vital question of a constitutional right to a home. Even as we move from out of COVID, hopefully, at the same time, we face a certain amount of uncertainty. It will undoubtedly have reaped havoc and destruction on many people. Not only the families and individuals that suffered sad bereavements, and not only the job losses and the business, the closure of businesses, but very likely it's going to lead to a, a looming recession. This is classic circumstances for the rise of homelessness, an outcome which we must desperately avoid. And this is something that can be achieved if and only if the government and the people have a very clear, positive and unshakable commitment to end homelessness. And that will only happen if we believe that everybody has a right to a place called home. Thank you. And now I want to introduce a short video to you. One night can change a lifetime. Hey, I'm home. It can shine a light on something you never thought would impact you. It can make you face a reality you never imagined. It can open your eyes. But one night can also change a lifetime for the better. This October, join Focus Ireland, Board Gosh Energy, Ready, and people across the country as we sleep out in our homes and gardens to stand in solidarity with people experiencing homelessness. Sign up at shinealight.focusireland.ie to help us raise vital funds by giving just one night to change a lifetime. Sign up, sleep out, and share your experience. Focus Ireland's Shine a Light Night. Proudly supported by Board Gosh Energy. Um, we're coming to a uh, close now, but uh, before uh, we do, could I remind those of you who are physically present that there are copies of uh, our, our annual report here for you, and those watching online, you can access it uh, straight away on our website. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank all of you for attending physically here, and Khaled in particular, uh, our customer representative, uh, and of course, uh, Stan. Uh, Stan and Pat will be lingering for a little while if any of you want to engage directly with questions. Uh, but for now, once again, thank you all for attending. Thank you. Bye.